James Webb T Space Telescope is identifying objects in the dark ages that by best measurements we have a large fully developed galaxy so who ordered that NASA's 10 billion James Webb Space Telescope has now been in space for little more than two years but the stunning results it's already returned are proving it's worth every penny historically our grandest views of deep space came from but as of July 2022 James Webb takes us beyond what anything else has seen from the faintest galaxies to the Richest clusters to mostly empty cosmic voids to the deepest depths of far off space and much much more the superior telescope has revealed details we've never seen before beyond all expectations when James Webb focused on large regions of space that appeared blank to Hubble's eyes it detected something mind-boggling. 900 trillion stars have mysteriously vanished into the void of space and things are getting scarier by the minute what happened where did stars go how did they utterly go without a Trace join us as we dig deeper into the shocking discovery made by James Webb and how the disappearance of that many stars might affect our planet and our very future. First of all you have to know that James Webb outperformed Hubble by more than we expected when you look at the capabilities of James Webb. And Hubble side by side you would expect that our newest space telescope could do much more in less time whereas Hubble has a primary mirror that's 2.4m across Webb segmented mirror spans 6.5m. This leads to a resolution that's 270% as sharp for the same wavelength light and light gathering power that's 730% as great as Hubble's from the physics of optics alone that's how much better and faster James Webb should be than Hubble not including the advantages James Webb also possesses in terms of cooling wavelength coverage and instrumentation in other words for the same amount of observing time you'd expect that James Webb would collect 730% as much light as Hubble but James Webb as you can. See in the comparison of its composite image of galaxy cluster SMAC E723, with that of Hubble is doing even better than that Hubble time is divided up into orbits as from its position in low Earth orbit it completes a revolution around our planet every 96 minutes a total of 6 orbits 4 in optical wavelengths, and 2 in infrared wavelengths were used to make the Hubble composite you'd expect based on simple math that 6 orbits multiplied by 96 minutes per orbit would equal 9.6 hours, or 576 minutes of Hubble time, but there's only a total of 3.4 hours or 203 minutes of Hubble data that's gone into these images despite nearly three times as much of Hubble's time having been devoted to this target for comparison James Webb observed this target for 12.5 hours and got 12.5 hours worth of data what's the difference location Hubble? Because it's in orbit around Earth spends more than 50% of its time with the Earth and the Earth's atmosphere in the way of its desired target and can only Acquire useful data when its target is in full unobstructed view of the telescope meanwhile James Webb is some 1.5 million km away at the L2 range point it always faces away away from the sun away from the earth and away from the moon it never has to contend with these obstacles to pristine observing and so its observations of targets are 100% time efficient. As opposed to less than 50% time efficient like Hubble was this improved efficiency extends to all observations taken with James Webb and should enable faster better science than Hubble could ever achieve in other words James Webb gave us the proof we needed not not only can James Webb find the objects that appeared blank to Hubble's eyes in many cases it can resolve them and examine their properties whereas Hubble could not even see them at all this helps us achieve one of James Webb's main science goals to teach us in the goest details possible how the universe around us grew up and came to be the way it is today for instance. Nearby Jupiter appears as never before its bands rings aurorae and moons appear alongside background galaxies James Webb viewed exoplanets directly with infrared imaging spectroscopically transits detect absorbed light and transmitted light revealing molecular presences star forming nebulae display unprecedented details from new young blue stars to gaseous features James Webb showcases what Bubel can at meanwhile Webb's initial alignment image grew spectacularly now a 140 plus megapixel view it. Expansively reveals far-flung galaxies just 1% of this view contains 1 to 100 identifiable objects massive evolved complex galactic shapes appear at all observed distances additionally disk galaxy candidates surprisingly appeared at extremely early times James Webb also viewed the most distant star ever Arundel but arguably its greatest images are of individual galaxies Webb's views reveal gas dust stars and more central black hole containing cores shine in mid-infrared light star forming gas. Bridges appear between interacting galaxies from Hubble to James Webb's near-infrared eyes to the eerie unfamiliar mid-infrared views the universe is coming into focus as never before under Webb's watchful eyes but in a shocking observation James Webb has detected trillions of stars disappearing without a trace. But how where did they go the two leading theories about what happened are that either it's still there still erupting its way through its death throes with less luminosity and perhaps 
obscured by dust or it just up and collapsed into a black hole without going through a supernova state, but in the worst case scenario the universe is just disappearing and we're powerless to stop it. It's been nearly a century since scientists first theorized that the universe is expanding and that the farther away a galaxy is from us the faster it appears to recede. This isn't because galaxies are physically moving away from us, but rather because the universe is full of gravitational bound. Objects and the fabric of space that those objects reside in is expanding, but this picture, which held sway from the 1920s onward has been recently revised. It's been only 20 years since we first realized that this expansion was speeding up and that as time goes on individual galaxies will appear to recede away from us faster and faster in time they'll become unreachable even if we journey toward them at the speed of light. When you look out at a star whose light arrives after traveling toward you. For 100 years you're seeing a star that's 100 light years away due to the fact that the speed of light is finite. But when you look out at a galaxy whose light arrives after traveling toward you for a journey of 100 million years you're not looking at a galaxy that's 100 million light years distant rather you're seeing a galaxy that's significantly farther away than that. The reason for this is that on the largest scales objects that aren't gravitationally bound together into galaxies groups or Plus as the universe is expanding the longer it takes a photon to travel from a distant galaxy to your eyes the greater the role of the universe's expansion implying that the most distant galaxies are even farther away than the amount of time the light from them has been traveling this shows up as a cosmic red shift since light is emitted with a particular energy and hence a particular wavelength. We fully expect that it will arrive at its destination with a particular wavelength as well if the fabric of the universe were neither expanding nor contracting but rather were constant that we length would be the same but if the universe is expanding the fabric of that space is stretching as energy the red shift increases at a greater than linear rate with time this increase if it occurs without any cap or limit on it will eventually start to affect these large bound structures in a rather unpleasant way first the largest most extended g galaxy clusters will start to dissociate as the outer Galaxies become unbound from the cluster as a whole hurled off into intergalactic space next the closer more compact portions of clusters and eventually galaxy groups get ripped apart as well until all we have left are individual galaxies afterwards the individual galaxies will have their dark matter gas and eventually stars ripped out of them from the outside in the outskirts of the galaxies are stripped away first but eventually even the cores of galaxies are stripped down to their individual. Star systems then close to the end individual solar systems are torn apart the icy bodies of the Oort cloud are stripped away followed by the Kuiper belt objects then the outer planets the asteroid belts and even the inner planets finally the individual structure like planet and moons are ripped apart into their constituent components in the penultimate instance of the universe molecules are torn apart into their individual atoms electrons are stripped off of their nuclei and atomic nuclei are ripped apart into protons and neutrons which are then ripped apart into quarks and gluons just moments before the fabric of space and time itself is demolished by dark energy although this might sound like a far-fetched scenario you must remember that if dark energy strengthens over time and you have no restriction on the amount of time that can pass then all of these occurrences are simply inevitable the only question is when fortunately dependent on the nature of dark energy and how it's Strength changes over time we can calculate how long it will be before each step occurs when it was originally proposed that first step could have occurred as soon soon as my 22 billion years from now. But that's been pushed out to some moding 60 80 billion years from now at minimum however once that first step occurs tearing apart structures on scales of about 20 million light years everything else proceeds rather quickly dark energy needs to strengthen tremendously to start overcoming the immense force of gravity and once it can do so for the most loosely bound structures where we're talking only hundreds of millions of years before all of the galaxies are torn out of their home groups and clusters then it's only tens of millions of years until stars are ripped out of their individual galaxies next it's only a few months until the outer planets are ripped away from their parent stars and weeks before the inner planets suffer the same fate it's only in those final few minutes that our planet itself will be torn apart and fractions of a second for molecules atoms and more to be ripped apart the greer the amount of force and energy is required to tear something apart the less time there is remaining until the universe itself comes to an end after all the big rip is one possibility for how the universe could end but if dark energy increases with time we have to face the facts at some point we're going to have to deal with energies and temperature temperatures that are High enough that we've never explored them in those regimes anything that's not ruled out remains possible that's all the information that we have for you today don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell so you never miss out on future episodes and be sure to also tell us what you think about today's content everyone's support motivates us to continue delivering quality content and to always improve move as always thanks for watching and we will see you next time.